Hi, you are watching. In the previous chapter, a server-wide event called the Lost Eden was activated, tasking players with finding the hidden entrance to the Lost Eden and resisting the invasion emerging from it. This massive event led to the temporary merging of all servers, bringing together stronger guilds to collaborate in an attempt to destroy the array eyes of the Lost Eden. However, the mutated monsters within the Lost Eden posed a formidable challenge. Fortunately, Lu Chen, being a monster himself, found that the fog within the area enhanced rather than hindered his abilities, making farming easier for him. As a result, Lu Chen was the first to reach the initial array eye. To his surprise, the boss monster guarding it proved to be formidable. Unlike any he had encountered before, with its attack easily depleting his health from a single strike. And for the first time, Lu Chen found himself on the brink of defeat. Yet, employing strategic tactics and displaying unwavering determination, he ultimately triumphed over the boss monster, albeit after several hours of intense battle. On to the next part. Since Lu Chen had defeated the evil wolf Hattie's remnant, a system notification popped up, giving him options to choose from as a reward, such as Hattie's Essence Fragment, which allows him to summon a powerful Phantom Hattie to fight for him, and its duration and combat power grows stronger with his level. Second option was Hattie's Cub, which allows him to summon Hattie's Cub. The Cub is weaker than the other Cubs, and very easily attracts monsters' attacks. But after growing up, it will bring a huge surprise. And since Luchin has a territory now, rather than summoning a limited-time monster, he deduced that it would be better to get a Cub and raise it in his territory. With this in mind, he chose the second option, gaining a cute little cub with a little pacifier that comes with it. Still, he can't use its cuteness, so Luchin immediately lifted it up and looked at its attributes, and just like what had been mentioned before, its attributes is definitely trash, as it only had one point of attack power, and it need a lot of mana to grow, so it seems like it would take time for him to see its improvement, but still, its circumstance is closely identical to what he previously experienced, so he was more than excited to see what this little cub will evolve into. With this in mind, Lu Chen called out his subordinates so that they could continue hunting monsters and make money in the next array eye, which they are more than willing to, as they were motivated like how their leader was. Meanwhile, in the vast expanse of the southern array eye, a conglomerate of guilds had assembled, pooling their resources and employing a variety of tactics to navigate the intricate array and conquer the challenges it posed. With strategic coordination and the inclusion of skilled rune masters, they sought to enhance their capabilities and facilitate a smoother journey through the array. However, their efforts were met with a sudden twist when the notorious player Only I'm Wild made an entrance into the Southern Array Eye. This unexpected development sent shockwaves through the combined group of guilds, instantly elevating their alertness to a higher gear. The realization dawned on them that time was of the essence, and the infamous Only I'm Wild was now a formidable contender within the array. The urgency to complete the challenge intensified, as the assembled players were well aware that the window of opportunity to surpass Only I'm Wild and secure their victory was rapidly diminishing. Simultaneously, at the entrance of another array eye, a diverse coalition of temporarily allied guilds successfully breached the entrance, only to be confronted by a significant setback. The challenge they now faced was the random teleportation of their members to disparate locations within the array. This unexpected dispersion threw a wrench into their meticulously crafted plans, leaving them disoriented and struggling to formulate a strategy for regrouping. In contrast, the Dynasty Guild, led by the composed Dynasty Crown Prince, exhibited a calculated calmness in the face of this predicament. They had anticipated such an outcome and, remarkably, already had 70% of their forces assembled and organized. The collaborative efforts of Barry Love and the World Guilds had effectively deployed 70 players to engage with monsters at the forefront, allowing the main troops to rest and prepare for direct assault on the array eye. The rationale behind this approach was to minimize the risk of their heavy hitters dying unexpectedly, especially considering the encroaching fog that complicated the process of regrouping. Confident in their tactical approach, they looked forward to completing the challenge seamlessly. However, their optimism was abruptly shattered by a system notification announcing that only Unwild had successfully destroyed the Southern Array Eye. This left the allied players with only six remaining Array Eyes. Faced with this new reality, they could ill afford to waste time. With a sense of urgency, they swiftly mobilized, converging on the center of the array to confront the challenges that lay ahead. Meanwhile, in the midst of the ongoing chaos, Luchin found himself once again presented with a rewarding choice, opting for the second option to acquire the Divine Beast, the Divine Eagle Vidifnir, with two Divine Beasts under his command. He resolved to further expand his formidable lineup and decided to venture into the next battleground, seeking the next array. However, before embarking on this new journey, 
Lu Chen conscientiously inspected his inventory. While he had gathered a considerable amount of equipment, a noticeable shortage of healing potions caught his attention. Recognizing the vital role potions played in facing challenging bosses, he realized the importance of replenishing his supply. The predicament, however, lay in the absence of viable locations to purchase these essential potions, adding an extra layer of annoyance to his situation. As he pondered alternative means to secure the much-needed potions, an unexpected opportunity materialized before him. As a group of players emerged from the thick bushes, navigating cautiously to maintain formation amid the low visibility caused by the surrounding fog, but their advances was abruptly stopped, as a silhouette that loomed ahead of them appeared and emitted a powerful aura, and the extensive prefix accompanying its name signaled that this particular monster was a formidable adversary. Unfortunately for the unsuspecting players, this particular boss lacked potions, and sensing an opportunity, he greeted them with a sinister grin, as he commanded his subordinates to attack these sorry fools from every direction. With this, the players are like sitting ducks, getting killed on the spot without much retaliation. It was a bloodbath, and it wasn't helping that the damage of these monsters could one-shot most of them. And seeing all of this transpired before their eyes, the well-aware players knew they would just be wiped out, so they started to retreat. To their dismay, the monsters were smart enough to target the cowards first, leaving them nowhere to run. In a mere five minutes, the once hopeful group of players found themselves defeated, their equipment scattered across the battlefield, and this was the first time that players had dropped equipment. This must be because of people being over level 10, passing the novice protection period. But this revelation only fueled Lu Chen's satisfaction even more, as he could now see that wild monster like him would definitely benefit killing player more. As they proved to drop more items, he even felt the need to command his subordinates to pick up the equipments because of how many there were. In observing the accelerated progress of players, Lu Chen realized that any moment of idleness would be unwise. Currently positioned closest to the southwest array, I, the Holy Fire Sun, he deemed it the optimal starting point. To his surprise, a well-trained group of around 400 players was already engaged in a fierce battle with the boss of the southwest array. I, recognizing their prowess, Lu Chen remained unperturbed, confident that the prolonged fight would deplete their resources, making it easier for him to intervene later. While biding his time, Lu Chen decided to tune into the official broadcast, aiming to glean insights into the overall situation in the Lost Eden. And as he expected, Feng Lingxi's group was contending with the boss in the Western Array, and according to their current progress, Lingxi estimated a protracted battle ahead for them, but she is confident that they couldn't be the only one who was having a hard time. So she also took a look at the other group's array eyes, and just like she expected, the others were struggling to defeat the boss as well. But the most noticeable one is that the Southwest Array I boss health is dropping the fastest. It should be the one that would be finished first. Next would be the Northwest Array I, then the Western Array I. With this in-depth summary of Lingji, Lu Chen couldn't be more grateful to her, as he just have to follow the set order and snatch the boss from other players, one after the other. With the intention firmly planted in his mind, Lu Chen took a half-hour break to rejuvenate himself. As the rest period concluded, he stretched his limbs feeling a surge of determination coursing through him. Fully prepared, he geared up for what he considered the most devious steal in the history of gaming, a calculated move to secure the last hit and etch his name as the most infamous player of all time. With this in mind, as soon as Luchin got close, he immediately unleashed his load, wrapping up the players, preventing them to do anything, and the ones that were not tangled by his spider silk was easily dealt by Luchin. With this, he got the boss for himself, and with just five minutes more, he finally destroyed the southwest eye of the formation, and just like before, he chose the option too, gaining another divine beast. But somehow, his mind was more occupied, thinking of how fruitful his plan was to attack the players. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Not only he got to kill the boss, but also get tons of healing potions. With this, he excitedly proceeded to the next array I, located in the west. Upon his arrival, he observed the concerted efforts of players working diligently to defeat the boss while maintaining a strategic formation. Their approach involved positioning the DPS units to attack from the sides, avoiding the boss's skill that absorbed mana and converted it into HP. However, their collective efforts faced an unexpected interruption as Luchin swiftly entered the fray, dispatching players with precision as he focused on taking down the boss. And within an hour of intense battle, Luchin achieved another victory, gaining a new divine beast, the Hellhound. To his surprise, a system notification flashed, revealing that a player named Imperial Prince had successfully destroyed the East Eye Formation. Although this development marked another player's progress, Lu Chen remained unperturbed, having already secured five Divine Beasts for himself. But with this, 
an unexpected turn of events happened, as another system interface popped up in front of him, congratulating him for collecting all the cubs of the four ancient fierce beasts, Hadi, Vidifer, Hellhound, and Chimera. This activated the hidden quest called the Ultimate Fierce Beast. This is a Lost Eden hidden quest, unique and non-repeatable, which allows him to take any combination of the four fierce beasts, or ancient evil beasts, inside the quest. He just need to kill the remnants of the four ultimate fierce beasts, and he can get one of the four ultimate fierce beast summoning stones or cub. And if he accepts this quest, he can choose one of the four ultimate fierce beasts, such as Fenrir the World Ender Wolf, Nidhogg the Black Dragon of Despair, Jormungandr the Dust World Serpent, Kraken the Giant Monster of the North Sea. But since the Black Dragon seemed to be the most edgier one, he ultimately chose it, which promptly started the quest, teleporting him and his subordinates to a new place separated from everyone and only pillars was besides the platform he was standing on, which he noticed that the beast he chose was standing at the top of it. With this, he can't help but feel worried that this quest might be like the secret realm prayer where he can no longer get back what he chose to offer, but he will soon wish it was the case, as it revealed to him that he will have to kill all the four fierce beasts at the same time, and on top of that, he needed to kill the black dragon of despair as well. Fortunately for him, the summoned beast was not actually there to fight him, but was there to help him defeat Nidhogg. With this, he regained back his composure in completing this quest. Since the evil wolf Hattie is good at combos, Vidifnir can split, the Hellhound can absorb mana, plus there is the Chimera stun, making this challenge more possible to complete, and so he immediately went to confront the dragon. But as soon as the dragon descends down, it revealed its overpowering might to them. With one fire breath, it already managed to decrease their health points by 20,000, which was an absurd amount, even for Lu Chen, because if it weren't for the four fierce beasts, him and his minions would definitely be dead by now. With this realization, he immediately commanded his troops to spread out and attack from a safe distance, while he on the other hand, unleashed his load on the dragon's thighs to hinder it from moving anywhere. Even if it was just for a second, this skill of his proved to be useful, since it opened an opportunity for the Hellhound to suck its mana, and followed with the Chimera to stun it for a second more. With this tactic, Lu Chen could damage the dragon's health bit by bit, while maintaining their survivability to the max. But since this thing has 500,000 HP, he knows that it will take a while for him to see its downfall. After an hour later, at the northeast eye of the formation, the members of the Guild of War God Blood Dance had noticed something was amiss, as the people of the Imperial Dynasty seemed to be deliberately separating them from the stone pillars, indicating that the Imperial Prince wants to break the agreement and get all the Divine Beast for himself, which they can't just let it be and so they trusted their gut and signaled everyone to get close to the pillars, and notify how these people from the dynasty might want to play dirty. And just like what they assumed, the prince was aiming to do just that, as he believes that every divine beast must belong to their dynasty alone. And so after defeating the boss, he immediately destroyed the array and chose the option too. With this, the server-wide quest had been completed, but since the dungeon hasn't ended yet, they are required to wait for a few minutes at the entrance to get out of the place. With this, it opened an opportunity for the members of the War God Blood to exact revenge to the Dynasty Guild for making fools out of them, and stole their divine beast they promised to get, and so the Imperial Guild was in a predicament, where they were surrounded by angry players from all directions, and since they had a PK status because of what they had done, they can't log out off the game or else the divine beast will explode, leaving them to fend for themselves for quite some time. Meanwhile, inside the secret realm, Luchin finally killed the Black Dragon of Despair, Nidhogg, after some time, just outside the entrance of the Lost Eden, a full-scale war erupted between guilds. However, what started as a feud against the Dynasty Guild unexpectedly escalated, expanding beyond its initial scope. It wasn't just about seeking revenge on the Dynasty Guild anymore. Other players joined the fray with the intention of claiming additional divine beasts of the slaughter immortal Xian Yuan, and the system's continuous announcements revealing who obtained the divine beasts inadvertently fueled this frenzy, indirectly encouraging players to seize opportunities and engage in thievery. On top of that, the drop rate for divine beasts appeared to be considerably high, intensifying the discord and animosity among the players involved in this unfolding chaos. Meanwhile, Luchin was just at peace, as he got another cub on his arsenal, and since he completed the ultimate beast quest, it unlocked the legendary hidden quest named Divine Blood Demon Seed, requiring him to clear the three hidden dungeons, Twilight of Gods, Demon Temple, and Ghost Valley, and collect the four ultimate beasts, Nidhogg, Fenrir, Jormagander, and Kraken. On top of that, he also needs to collect the four ultimate evil beasts, Typhon, Hellhound, Medusa, and Hundred-Headed Dragon Laden, 
which was an insane requirement for a single quest, making Lu Chen's jaw outstretch as he couldn't believe such a quest to exist. The difficulty of it was too crazy, even for him. However, before Lu Chen could delve into contemplating the daunting task that lay ahead, the system abruptly intervened. Forcefully ejecting him from the Lost Eden since he remained the sole occupant, he found himself teleported back to the entrance of the Lost Eden, where a chaotic battlefield unfolded before his eyes. Countless players were engaged in fierce combat, displaying no restraint in their clashes. This spectacle left Slayer bewildered. It was the first time he had witnessed such a tumultuous scene unfolding right in front of him. But with other players starting to take notice of his presence, he promptly made the decision to withdraw, hastening away from the chaotic battleground. And the proximity of this place to his territory led him to choose a swift retreat to the safety of his lair. Shortly after, he summoned all his minions and welcomed them to their new home, envisioning a space where they could rest and commence building something for themselves. However, their plans were momentarily interrupted by a distant commotion, the loud noises from players echoing beyond the trees. Lu Chen, initially thinking they were pursued, was pleasantly surprised to discover that the players were embroiled in a chaotic skirmish among themselves. This unexpected turn of events delighted Luchin even more, as the players really know how to pick a place, and this is his home turf so if he doesn't clean them up, it would just tarnish his reputation, and he can't let that happen, especially not when his minions were around. And so as the players were busy fighting with each other, Lu Chen and his subordinates took their time to do their most devious surprise attack. They couldn't even know what hit them, and with this, Lu Chen obtained their respective divine beast. And now it was no wonder to Lu Chen why the system always announced who destroyed the array. I. It turned out it's to encourage everyone to rob, and it seems like this thing has currently 100% drop rate, making it more tempting to steal. But since he almost got every divine beast in his arsenal, he was more than convinced to get the last remaining one to add to his collection. And just like before, the players were still fighting each other to get the hand on the divine beast. But unfortunately for them, Luchin already made up his mind to take it, and so they were easily wiped out because of this. And with just a few minutes after, he finally defeated the last remaining player, and got the last divine beast, and activated the hidden quest named Ultimate Evil Beast. And similar to his previous experience, Lu Chen was tasked with choosing one of the four ultimate evil beasts. Drawing from the lessons learned in his earlier quest, he approached this challenge with newfound confidence, anticipating a smoother journey ahead. And with just two hours later, he got to finish the hidden quest and gain the Cub Fenrir. Now he has two Wolf Cub in his shoulder, which only made him delighted, but because he had been playing for hours already, he felt the need to take a rest first, and so he decided to auction the equipment he gained and log off after that. Having successfully extricated himself from the immersive gaming experience, Luchin found solace in the knowledge that, after selling the latest batch of equipment, his savings had likely surpassed the million mark. With financial matters in good order, he decided it was an opportune moment to pleasantly surprise Louis with a new home. However, as he prepared to embark on this thoughtful gesture, he discovered 16 missed calls on his phone, instantly triggering a wave of concern. Fearful that something untoward had befallen his sister during his gaming session, Lu Chen hastily dialed her number. To his relief, the cause of the multiple missed calls was not a dire emergency but rather Lu Yi's frustration. The guild they were part of had become the target of relentless harassment by players from the Dynasty Guild. Incidents of bullying had escalated from the wild area to the neutral zone making gameplay an exasperating experience. Lu Chen spent a good half hour consoling his sister, empathizing with her predicament and offering words of encouragement. Louis was genuinely grateful for her brother's understanding and support. After the call concluded, Lu Chen realized that revealing to Louis about his identity isn't a smart idea for the time being, as his situation is too special. But the people of the dynasty really have the nerve to target his sister, while they are inferior players compared to his power. And so it seems like he will have to send a message to these guys and make them pay at full price, with no discount whatsoever. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.